This is a GCSE chemistry tutorial within topic 8. This video will look over testing for gases. It is important to note that whilst testing for gases appears in topic 8, it is a topic that can be added onto a large number of other topics. For example, the gases that are produced during electrolysis. In this tutorial, we will look at why it's important to test for gases. We will look at how to describe and explain the tests for a selection of gases and we'll look at how flame emission spectroscopy can be used to identify elements. That final part of the video will be for triple students only. Our big question today is to look at why it's important to be able to test for the production of chlorine gas. The first gas that you need to be able to test for is hydrogen. Hydrogen is a highly flammable gas when it reacts with oxygen. This is what happened in the Hindenburg disaster, which we can see here. When it combusts, it produces a signature squeaky pop. To test for it, we place a lit splint into the gas. If we get that squeaky pop, then hydrogen is present. The second gas we need to be able to test for is oxygen. Oxygen is an element that allows other elements to undergo combustion. It is a highly reactive element. Because of this, it can relight a glowing splint. To test it, we put a glowing splint inside the gas, and if it relights, oxygen is present. The third gas that you need to be able to test for is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the gas that we exhale in breathing and the gas that is produced in respiration. It is able to react with lime water. Lime water is a solution of calcium hydroxide. We can see this here. When carbon dioxide is bubbled through the lime water, it turns the lime water from this clear colour to a cloudy or milky colour. The final gas we need to test for is chlorine. We've come across chlorine before in the groups video where it is a member of the halogens which are the group 7 elements. For chlorine we test it using damp blue litmus paper. It will then turn it red and then eventually turn it white. This whitening or this bleaching tells us that we have chlorine present. Testing for chlorine is especially important due to its toxicity. If you are doing double award science, then you can stop this video at this point, as we will be moving on to flame emission spectroscopy, which is a triple only topic. Flame emission spectroscopy uses the fact that different metal ions produce different flame colours. We've looked at this before when we looked at flame colours and using flame tests. Every metal ion gives a characteristic line spectrum. This is because as the ions heat up, the electrons become excited. The electrons then drop back down to their original energy levels and transfer this additional energy as light. We can pass this light through a spectroscope, which can detect different wavelengths of light to produce a line spectrum, as we will look at on the next slide. The combination of wavelengths emitted by an ion depends on its charge and its an electron arrangement, so we need to look all the way back at that initial electron arrangement we looked back at in topic 1. Since no two ions have the same charge and the same electron arrangement, different ions emit different wavelengths of light. Each ion therefore produces a different pattern of wavelengths, has a different line spectrum and hence a different colour. The intensity of the spectrum is used to tell us the concentrations of the ions in the solution. The brighter that the intensity is, the higher the intensity, the higher the concentration. This means that line spectrums can be used to identify not only the ions present, but also to calculate their concentrations. We can therefore use flame emission spectroscopy to identify different ions that are present in a mixture. 
it makes it far more useful than a flame test as a flame test will only tell us about one single metal ion. Flame emission spectroscopy is an example of instrumental analysis. That's a test that uses a machine. This is more advantageous than conducting chemical tests on a substance as they are very sensitive so they can detect even the smallest amounts of a substance. They are very fast and you can automate the test so they can run whilst you're not there and they are very accurate. Here we have an example of what we would see on a spectroscopy for both sodium ions Na plus and lithium ions Li plus. We can see that their spectrum are very, very different. We would then be able to compare these to a reference spectra to work out if sodium or lithium ions were present in our mixture. You will look at far more examples of instrumental analysis at A-level or IB.